Nagbabalik tayo ngayong gabi para sa isang extension lecture ng 60th UP National Writers Workshop. Ang extension lectures ay isang anyo ng pagpapalaganap ng interes sa panitikan at malikhaing pagsulat sa pamamagitan ng pagtalakay mula sa iba't ibang napapanahong paksa. Ngayong gabi po ay mapalad tayong makasama si Annette Hug at ang kanyang extension lecture na pinamagatang Tiffen Lager, A German Novel on Friendship, Nuclear Waste, and the Future of Languages. The idea sounds weird, but it, ha- but it has come up in professional circles discussing the problems of nuclear waste. Is an order in the monastic tradition best equipped to preserve the knowledge necessary to protect future generations from the danger of nuclear waste? Given that this waste is buried in deep depositories for up to one million years. In Annette Hoog's novel, Tiefenlager, two women in their 40s take up the challenge. They found a monastery in Western Europe. As one of them is a Filipino Chinese nurse and the other a, Sw- a Swiss consultant on pension schemes. Their enterprise is taking place in multiple languages and their visions for the future are rooted in different but entangled places, passions, and fears. Annette Hug will give an account of how living in Manila and interviews with Filipinas in Hong Kong has shaped important parts of this novel. Ideas are put up for discussion on the positive abilities and difficulties of friendship across oceans and decades on unexpected overlaps between monasteric traditions and scientific rigor. Ngayon po ay tinatawagan ko si Miss Annette Hogue. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Um, at uh, maraming salamat na nandito pa rin kayo uh, kahit inaantok na yata. At uh, pinapasalamat ko ng lubos ang ICW at ang mga panelists para sa magandang pakakataon ito na pwede kong sundin sa live stream ang mga lahat ng talakayan ng pahalihan ito. Isang konsepto uh, na paulit-ulit kong narinig kahapon ay ang positionality ng autor. At uh, napaka-importante yata ito para sa aking talumpati. Parang uh, what am I doing here? A Swiss writer in a workshop on Philippine literature. At gusto ko muna uh, binanggit o, o gusto ko muna banggitin ang poetics essay ni Napoleon Arceano III at ang sinulat niya, laging merong mas sentro pa sa sentro. At hinuhula tila ni Sir June Cruz Reyes na gusto raw ipain ni Nap Arceyes itong sentro ng panitikan. At dito sa Zurich, sa Switzerland, sa gitna ng Europa, Napaka-importante din, uh, lalo na sa aking itong tanong, na kung nasaan ba ang sentro, nasa baan ba ang mga libis, at isa ba lang ang sentro, o ilan ba ang umiiral. At uh, uh, narinig no, uh, uh, nung inimbitahan o si Bowman, uh, uh, sinabi niya ma- mag- si Filipino, da- sana ako at uh, pumapayag naman ako pero kung minsan mag-i-ingles uh, rin ako kasi kung minsan hindi talaga sapat ang aking Filipino. Aya, uh, itong sinabi na itong nobela, Tiffen Lager, na um, uh, medyo uh, masali- masalimuot yata ang paksa tungkol sa anong bagay, mahirap sabihin kasi uh, maraming paksa at lalo halo-halo at mukhang dapat ganun. Ang damdamin ko 
um, kasi parang hindi ako ang pumili ng paksa sa halip ay ang kwento ay lumapit sa akin kaya um, pinili ako ng kwento. Natulala ako sa umpisa noong November 2014 na sa isang kweba ako kasama ng mga uh, kasapi ng aking grupo sa ng isang grupo ng union. At uh, pumasok ka, uh, kami sa isa, sa kweba na yan sa isang pundok sa kan, kanduran ng Switzerland. Jurassic Mountain Range ang tinatawag uh, doon Yura sa amin. At sa isang banda doon, may patong pato na hilera ng lupa o kayang petrified na buhangin ng sinaunang dagat. At uh, hindi ko nahanap ang Filipino ng Opalinos Clay. Kayo mag english ako muna. Uh, Opalinos Clay is a deep layer of clay, as the name says, in, in the Jurassic Mountains. And... It is the latest and most promising candidate uh, to build depositories for uh, nuclear waste. Because the radiation, as you know, of this uh, nuclear waste is very dangerous for many, many years. It is stated in the German and in the Swiss uh, law on nuclear waste that depositories have to be built that should remain safe for one million years. Now, This is quite crazy if you think of how long humanity has had a writing system, for example, and then to imagine how long one million year is. So in uh, November 2014, I was still working as a trade union officer for the major trade union of public employees in Switzerland. Uh, so I was um, working with hospitals, Uh, CBA uh, negotiations, and my favorite uh, work was actually with the janitors of public schools. So, and one of these uh, janitors of the board of the section that I was working for, uh, one of these janitors was sort of a mineral nerd. He was collecting stones. And for the social outing of this uh, union group, he wanted to visit a uh, rock laboratory in Monterrey, in the Jurassic Mountains. It's run by the Swiss government and European, American and Japanese researchers test equipment for future uh, depositories of nuclear waste. Now, as we were um, uh, there, we were guided by a representative of the consortium of the energy industry of Switzerland. So the companies running nuclear power plants in our country. And it was this representative of the industry who told us that the technical problems of the reposit depository have been solved. He was very optimistic that they would build a safe site, an excellent site actually. Another problem, however, needed to be investigated, he said. And this was the problem of memory. Uh, the problem of passing on knowledge over time. How can we make sure that people who live in 10,000 or 100,000 or 1 million years still know uh, about the danger of this nuclear waste and what's in that depository? And actually, to my disbelief, this representative of the industry mentioned this idea that maybe we should found a monastery, that maybe uh, monasteries, both in Christianity and Buddhism, had shown to be the most stable institution to pass on knowledge over time. So maybe we needed a sort of nuclear waste monastery. At uh, doon talaga pinili ako ng kwento. Sinalukob ako ng guni-guni na ito. Hindi ko sigurado agad doon sa kweba kung tama ba ang narinig ko. Pero hinahanap ko sa kasaysayan ng talakayan tungkol sa basurang nuklear, natanto ko na paulit-ulit na sumisikat itong ideya ng monasteryo. 
at nagmumula ito sa mga siyentifikong usap, usapan, hindi lang basta-bastang usapin. At uh, nananatili uh, uh, sa aking ang kwento noong 2015, noong tumigil akong magtrabaho sa Union para maging isang freelance writer. At kung minsan, naramdaman ko itong monastic order para sa pamamahala sa basurang nuklear ay parang isang mana yating o baka isang kulam ng dating kong mga kasama sa Union kasi hindi natuwa sila na umalis ako noon. Noong sa umpisa ng aking trabaho bilang freelance writer, palagi nag-iisa ako sa bahay na uh, lumalaki at lumalawak sa aking kamalayan ang isang bagong grupo ng limang tao. At talagang itinataguyot nila ang monasteryo. Hindi naman ako natakot sa kanila. Uh, gusto ko yata sumama, kaya sinulat ko itong nobela ng kanilang order. Um, kaya uh, tungkol sa anong bagay ba itong, itong nobela? Tungkol sa isang maliit na grupo ng tao kaling sa, isa't isang, sa iba't ibang lugar ng mundo, pareho ng mga... Uh, ng mga ng bawat ospital, bawat uh, paaralan o pabrika sa aking bansa. At uh, medyo karaniwan din ang kanilang karanasan na imposible talaga ang tungkulin. Pero sinusubukan pa rin nila uh, mahanap pang paraan. At uh, mahirap ipaliwanag kung bakit, pero meron pa rin silang pag-asa. At um, tungkol sa makaibigan, tungkol sa makakaibigan din ang aking nobela. Kasi sa umpisa, nakita-kita ulit ang dalawang makaibigan. Yun, isa sa taga Maynila, isa taga Switzerland. Isa itong, uh, at uh, nagtatrabaho silang dalawa sa Hong Kong. Si Betty Wang naman ang nurse na Chinoy na caregiver. At si Petra naman, accountant, specialist ng old age insurance na naging consultant. Talawang putlimang taon na hindi sila nakita-kita, maraming kwento siguro, at uh, natanto nilang dalawa, gusto nilang baguhin ang buhay nila. Kasi walang asawa, hindi ganun kamasaya sila sa kanilang trabaho, at uh, kaya gusto nilang mag-umpisa ng bagong kabanata. Isang proyekto malaha, mahalaga na may talagang say-say. Kaya um, uh, inumpisahan nila ang monasteryo para sa pamamahala ng basurang nuklear sa Switzerland muna hanggang naging pandaigtigang order ang proyekto nila. At uh, uh, I'm sure you realize this is not a very realistic novel. It is like a play. It is or a, a, a game. Naglaralo ako sa, sa itong ideya o sa, sa itong guni-guni ng monasteria para sa pamamahala ng uh, basurang nuklear. Uh, parang um, isinasalaysay ko ang unang dalawang taon ng order. At dahil mahilig ang mga kasapi ng order uh, sa makwentuhan, Pwede kong isingit sa kitna ng nobela ang mga sci-fi stories na iniimbento nila habang nag-iinuman sa halamanan ng monastir. Yon ang so parang uh, yon ang talagang fun kahit uh, isa isang sci-fi story na mas uh, parang uh, uh, how do you say that uh, utopian pero ang iba mas uh, black uh, dystopian. At um, na, kung, kung nananagalog ako at kung kinagamit ko halimbawa itong salitang pasurang nuklear <laughs> na inaala, inaala ko um, agad isang awit na 
noong 90s na rin ko isang awit yata ni Susan Fernandez na doon ang line um, Itigil lang karerang nuklear Itigil lang karerang nuklear Iparinig sa buong gaitik ang awit ng bukas yon lang ang inaalala ko at um, na-realize ko kung nananagalog ako iba ang mga inaalala ko tungkol sa paksa ng ng mga bagay na nuklear bigla nandyan ang bataan nuclear power plant at yung mga talakayan dati tungkol sa 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 ganitong proyekto ibig sabihin um mahalaga at uh, talagang importante ang lingwahe at tungkol sa wika mismo ang aking nobela Kasi tungkol sa mga maraming wika ng mundo, halimbawa, paano isusulat ng mga makakasama sa order? Paano isusulat nila ang masamang balita ng basurang nuklear? Paano uunlad ang mga wika ng mundo? Ingles pa palagi ang pinakaunang wika o magiging sulat na pandaiktik pa ang mga Chinese characters. Magiging universal code pa ang lingwahe ng isang computer program. Tapat pang maunawaan natin kung sino ang magtatagumpay sa mga digmaan ng pinapukasan. O dapat pang maunawa a, maunawaan kung paano maghalo-halo ang mga wika sa mga malalaking lunsod ng mundo, halimbawa sa Maynila. Tapat pang maintindihan ang kalakaran ng mga di sinadyang pagsasama-sama at paghahalo-halo ng mga wika kaling sa iba't ibang lugar ng mundo at kaling sa iba't ibang sulok ng isang lipunan. Pero sa totoo lang, mas simple rin itong tanong. Mas simple at mas mahirap. Uh, kung sa nobela man o sa, sa buhay ko. Uh, itong mas simple at mas mahirap na tanong ay uh, naiintindihan ba natin ang isa't isa? Naiintindihan ba natin kung anong nangyayari ngayon? Kung anong pwede mangyayari sa mundo? At lalo na uh, sa, napon, sa panahon nito ng, uh, ng pandemya, uh, kahit uh, mas mapapaya pa ang Switzerland kaysa Filipinas, maraming problema. O, o maraming na hindi naintindihan kung halimbawa sa 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 tanong ng bakuna na uh, kung mabuti ba o hindi at parang uh, imposible kung minsan ang ang naiintindihan ang isa't isa sa mga uh, paksa na ito at sa mas personal pa um, so kaya anong dapat gawin kung kulang ang kaalaman at pagkaunawa. Pero tapat pa rin bilisan ang pakilos. At dito rin, isang karaniwang uh, karanasan na lalo na sa akin, sa lahat ng mga lugar ng trabaho na, na nakita ko, uh, parang kung pigang-piga na tayo sa gitna ng kairaming dapat kawin, pero hindi kaya. Paano lang? At uh, hindi talaga nabibigay ng sagot ang aking nobela sa tanong na ito. Pero sinusundan ko ang mga hakpang ng mga kasapi ng order at ng kanilang kwentuhan sa kanilang iniimbento na sci-fi stories at ang kanilang mga pagsusubok ng mga maaring solusyon. Hindi ko ni sinasabi na magtatunog. Hindi ko sinasabi na magtatagumpay na sila. Ibig sabihin, tungkol sa isang hangarin din ang aking nobela. Tungkol sa hangarin, sa isang maginhawa at masaganang buhay na hindi tungkol sa pagpapayaman, pero sapat na ang oras para mag-aaral, para magnilay-nilay at uh, magkwentuhan. At uh, gustong gusto ko kaninan umaga ang sinabi ni Sir Butch Talisay 
tungkol sa kasayahan na importante rin ang ang kasayahan at uh, sa parang sa isip ko at um, at pumasok din ito sa uh, sa nobela na ito na ka, parang gusto ko mahanap mahanap ang mga buto ng kasay na ng kasayahan sa kasalukuyan na baka mabubulaklak sa kinabukasan at uh, sa, sa sa personal talaga um, gusto kong sab- parang para sa akin talaga ang pinakamasaya ako kung pwede akong mag-aral ng bagong wika uh, o kung pwede akong maklase o magtandem sa ibang tao at uh, parang parang teacher spec talaga ang uh, paboritong papel ko sa buhay. Yun. Um, anong oras na? Oo. Marami uh, uh, paka short lang yung anong ginagawa ko para isinalarawan uh, itong Betty, ito si Betty Wang, ang aking Pilipino character sa sa nobela. Parang bida talaga siya. At um, lumaki siya sa Maynila, taga China ang tatay niya at uh, may-ari siya ng isang vulcanizing shop. Uh, medyo mahirap ang relasyon ni Betty Wang sa tatay niya. Uh, nag-away-away sila palagi. Palasuway yata si Betty Wang. At uh, ayaw ang tatay na naging tomboy siya. At kaya run away siya noong parang 17 years na taong uh, umalis siya sa tahanan ng pamilya at uh, nanatili siya sa bahay ng isang guro na itong guro dating aktivista at uh, ganun sa kanitong paraan pumasok si Betty Wang sa isang eksena na o sa isang parang social circle uh, uh, quite a uh, cosmopolitan circle of students, NGO workers, etc. in Quezon City, early 90s. And as you uh, realize, this is sort of my own, this is the, the, the little bit of the Philippines that I experienced when I was a student from 92, 93, 94 at UP Diliman, CSWCD. And I experienced UP and uh, the whole part of Quezon City um, as, a, as quite a cosmopolitan place uh, with a lot of uh, foreign students, mostly from other Asian countries, Vietnam, Nepal, etc. And the place where a lot of hope uh, was felt because the Cold War had just finished and um, the, the really big problems had started but uh, were not as clear yet. So actually, um, Betty Wang uh, is then uh, naging nurse siya at uh, matagal nagtrabaho sa isang malaking hospital bago pumunta sa Hong Kong. Sa order para sa pamamahala ng basurang nuklear, uh, nagiging medika naman siya. Ibig sabihin, responsable siya ng kalusugan ng mga kasapi at uh, marunang din siya sa pag-aral ng mga panganib ng basurang nuklear. Talubhasa pa rin siya ng kalusugan ng utak. Ibig sabihin ng mga medical na tanong tungkol sa pag-ala-ala. Kasi sa Hong Kong, nagtatrabaho siya bilang caregiver ng isang matandang lalaki na nag-uulayanin. At, at kaya may Alzheimer siya. So doon ang problema ng Alzheimer malapit sa kanya. At uh, Sa nobela, hindi dire-derecho uh, ko uh, isinalaysay ang talambuhay ni Betty Wang. At bakit? And this is uh, related to a, a, a concept that I have to name in English because it is a very, I don't know, maybe it's a very European, US uh, discussion. I'm very curious to know what you think. It's this uh, discussion on cultural appropriation which I actually think is a very valid discussion. Uh, the question of who is legitimate to actually write about whose life, like um, is, it, uh, is it appropriation if me as a Swiss writer, if I'm sort of 
including and or fleshing out, inventing uh, the life of a Filipino or a Filipino character. And um, I, maybe in the discussion, we can go on more about this, but um, on a short note, it's, um, it was very important for me to, to actually do quite a lot of research uh, before I, when I had this idea of this character. So uh, I was lucky to get a grant to spend four weeks in Hong Kong uh, in January, where you had a lot of um, free days because of the Chinese New Year. So I was able to spend a lot of time in the central district, sa mga kampuhan ng mga uh, domestic workers sa Filipinas at pwede kong kwentuhan sa maraming tao doon lalo na sa, sa mga pila sa harap ng mga simbahan kasi dapat uh, pumila ng isang oras para uh, makaupo sa loob ng simbahan at uh, ten uh, uh, sampung misa uh, sa isang linggo uh, sa St. Joseph's lang. So maraming oras na ako para kwentuhan. At ma maganda talaga itong kwenta sa mga pila kasi hindi interview. Kung nag-interview ako sa pamamagitan na sing isang NGO, lalo na ang parang what I got to hear was really the bagong bayani story at yung ay malungkot at dapat matyaga, dapat matiis at uh, the whole analysis of the uh, of the kahirapan itong uh, migration policy and I mean I, I agree with a lot of the criticism but for the literary uh, purpose I had it was actually very important to 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 break out of those very a little bit prefabricated narratives. So I um, I was very happy to to actually to also meet the president of the Philippine Nurses Association in, in Hong Kong. I found her through Facebook, and it turned out, pala, uh, mahilig din siya uh, magsulat. At kaya, so kaya um, about three times we had dinner to to discuss about writing and about her experience. And I mean, she was a, a really extreme example because she was a, 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 she had a diploma as a nurse and in Hong Kong, she was uh, employed to care for a dog because you know, a lot, it's, it's very fashionable now to have these flushy big dogs that have to be shampooed every day. So, um, yes, and Maybe my last line on this cultural uh, appropriation question is uh, that for me, it's, it is in, in extremely important to have a critical assessment of the colonial narratives that we inherit as German writers, as writers of the German language. Like that uh, there are a, a lot of murky traditions that we might not be aware of that we have to analyze in order to somehow come out of it. On the other hand, to say that like you should restrict yourself to your own social group would mean that I have to totally misrepresent the society I'm living in because like in Switzerland, 25% of the population don't hold a Swiss passport and more than half have some kind of migration story in their family. So like in hospitals, especially in the, the places that I've seen in my work, it was always a totally mixed uh, mixed crowd who worked there together. So for me, it was extremely important to in this uh, novel that there would be a janitor. Yung mga kasama ko sa union. At that I somebody who came from far away, like uh, Betty Wang. And the Philippines is the parang sa tabi ng Switzerland, ang, the, the, the country I know, I feel to know uh, best. And so it was clear that it would be a Filipino car. Um, yun. Um, oh, oh. So how am I in the time? Uh, baka, um, 
papasok na si si um, si boss Bowman o si kuya Bowman o uh, kasi um, si Bowman naman isa sa pinakamasarap kong kausap bula uh, sa no, noong 2012 na, um, na parang I was working on a novel tungkol sa pagsasalin ni Rizal ng William Tell ni Schiller mula German sa Tagalog. Yun ang paksa ko. At uh, alam nyo, inyo naman, ang, ang talagang pinakamahusay na talubhasa dyan, si Bowman. At um, kaya, uh, pwede ba tayo makwentuhan ngayon? Uh, salamat sa iyong uh, napakagandang sharing uh, Anet no at uh, tuwa-tuwa ako no uh, so uh, nagpapasalamat ang lahat sa iyong napakagandang uh, lecture ngayon uh, tuwa-tuwa rin sila sa iyong pagsalita uh, sa Filipino at uh, um din nga so ang ating uh, gagawin ngayon ay konting talakayan no um ito yung iyong nobela no so uh, net book oh. uh, Ethan Laga uh, tadi ano tito sa akin at uh, maganda rin yung kanyang uh, yung kanyang um, um, dedication na uh, <laughs> uh, sa aliman nga lang ano at uh, mayroon akong ilang mga komento tungkol sa Isabela na pwedeng siguro pagsimulan ng uh, mga tanong ano so maari ma- mamaya ay may mga magtanong uh, tungkol sa yung lecture at tungkol sa yung uh, nobela at uh, sa kabuluhan nito sa Mari Kabuluhan sa Pilipinas. So, uh, <coughs> sa katunayan, syempre, mahirap. Kunti pa lang ang nakapagbasa nito dahil ito nasa German. Uh, hindi ko lang alam kung may naisali na ito sa iba pang mga wikang uh, Europeo, katulad ng French, katulad ng oh. iyong uh, Wilhelm Tell in Manila, no? na talagang uh, nalo pa ng premyo ang iyong, uh, uh, iyong salin no? sa French ng iyong nobela. Sana ito ay mangyari rin dito sa Tungsen Laga dahil ito rin ay may universal na uh, kabuluhan. Uh, may kinalaman nga sa usapin nga ng, uh, ng uh, atomic waste ano? na, na ito ay pangmatagalan na problema na hindi lamang uh, isang bansa ang usapin kundi global ang usapin ng, uh, ng uh, basurang uh, na tawag mga basurang uh, nuklear. Ano? So uh, may mga ilang komento ko sa iyong nobela ano? At sa katunayan ay mabilis ko lang nabasa no? at uh, kakatapos ko lamang. Kakatapos ko lamang. At ito yung aking ilang mga komento sa iyong nobela. Uh, unang-una ay uh, uh, maganda yung iyong kwento tungkol sa mga monastery. You know? Mga monastery bilang batayan ng uh, pagpapatuloy ng knowledge o kaalaman uh, sa mga generations, ano? iba't ibang generations yung sa alin magkatao na klosta ano uh, yung tanong ko lang ay bakit although nabanggit mo nga na ito ay bunga ng isang disku- talakayan ano na may nagbanggit na isang uh, concern sa nuclear waste uh, na nabanggit na may clo- yung mga monastery sila yung may kakayahang mag-preserve ng knowledge through generations mm-hmm. ang isang tanong ko although this might be um, Um, easy to answer, no? Bakit monastery, a cluster ang ginamit mong halimbawa, bakit hindi guild, ano? O tsul mm-hmm. sa German. No? Oh, tsul. Oh. Yung mga guild oh, kasi sa uh, Europa, sila yung nagpapatuloy ng kaalaman. Nagpapasa-pasa ng kaalaman tungkol sa ano, crafts, no? Kung baga, kung ang presentasyon ng uh, kung ang pag uh, pag uh, pagpreserba ng kaalaman tungkol sa pag pag uh, Kumbaga, pag, uh, eh, pagtanggol ng tao tungkol sa nuclear waste, kumbaga, pag, kung paano tutubunan ng tao sa problema ng nuclear waste ay intergenerational. Bakit hindi sunf o gil? Oh. Oh. In fact, ang sunf ay uh, masasabi pa natin kumpara sa cluster o monastery. Kumbaga, kung, kung ang cluster, ang kanilang ginagamit na lingwahe ay Latin no? o universal na lingwahe, ang mga tsunf, ano, lalo na sa panahon na ang Europa ay hindi pa nagkaroon ng, uh, ng mga nation states, 
ang mga tools ay matatawag natin tunay na cosmopolitan. Ibig sabihin, ang mga tool, gustong matuto ng mga kaalaman ay maaaring maglakbay ano, kung paano gumawa ng mga produkto, ng mga, libawa, mga damit, mga sama. o iba pang uh, metal, ano, ay maaaring maglakbay sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Europa at matuto ng mga skills. Ano. Kung baga kung usapin ng uh, panglinguistikang uh, cosmopolitanismo, ay uh, ang tools ay... Uh, alam natin yung mga yung mga ano di ba alam mo yun alam mo yun anet no yung mga yung mga gusto mag-train sa ilalim ng Zoom ay maari maglak bahagi ng Europa para makauwi ng kakayahan ibig sabihin kailangan nila matuto ng iba't ibang mga lingwahe ibig sabihin mo ang cosmismo ng wika na nais mong ilarawan sa nobela ay maari mas mas nababagay sa Zoom kaysa sa Klosta ano kung usapin lamang na ito ano kaya uh, yun yung isang tanong ko, bakit bakit cross ang ginamit mo imbes na tools o, o guild bilang halimbawa ng iyong uh, kaalaman na nagpapasa-pasa ano sa mga henerasyon mm-hmm. no? At uh, at uh, itong cosmopolitanismo ng iyong nobela ay napakahalaga. Matutuwa ang mga nagbabasang Pilipino sa iyong nobela dahil ang dami-dami mga Tagalog ng mga salita dito ano. Uh, yung yung isang napakaimportanteng character ang tawag sa kanya ate ano <laughs> nito ay ay talagang uh, napakasentral yung ate bilang isang kategorya sa iyong nobela siya yung parang leader nung uh, monarchy ah uh, bagamat hindi siya Pilipina ano uh, si Betty Wang ang Pilipina so uh, uh, tingin ko ang pinakamahalagang uh, inaambag ng iyong nobela ay yung uh, kung paano para tumugon sa isang pandaigdigang problema, sa isang global na usapin, katulad ng nuclear waste, ay kinakailangan natin ng, uh, ng cosmopolitan na pamamaraan ng, mm. ng pag-ibigito. Kung saan nagtatagpo-tagpo ang iba't ibang mga bansa, iba't ibang mga wika. Ano? Kaya uh, lalo na sa dulo ng yung nobela, ay, uh, ay uh, nandun, nagkakahalo-halo ng iba't ibang mga lingway. Uh, at pati Chinese, ano? of course, uh, Uh, Annette uh, began to learn Chinese in just a few years, just a few years ago, ano? and she's very, she's now quite good at it. No, so nakatanggit dito sa ganito, ano, na Chinese characters. Of course, I can identify the Chinese characters now, ano. Uh, at uh, maganda yung uh, pagmeld ng mga uh, ng iba't ibang mga para maigit yung cosmopolitan problem. Na yung mga problema natin ngayon ay mga global na issue. At uh, kung makita natin din sa mga review ano this is considered uh, isa, sa isang uh, sa isang um, uh, website o sa isang program na Swiss one of the fi- one of the 52 best novels of this year right uh, that means it's uh, one of the best novels of every week of the year ano? so it's considered one of the best novels of the year ano uh, uh, sa ano sa Switzerland ano And the problem lang ay hindi natin mabasa ito sa ating sa wikang na maintindihan pa natin. No? Pero uh, ito ay uh, nagtataglay ng uh, cosmopolitanismo ano? at particular yung, uh, yung Chinese and very central Filipino um, Filipino contribution to this uh, cosmopolitan world. Ano? So, um, oh, hindi, hindi ito nasa English, ito nasa German. Uh, but, but it's a Swiss-German, also quite very Swiss- uh, German also ano and um, yes. so uh, ito yung ating uh, yung aking mga tanungan lang tungkol dito. Oh. Maliban dito yung huli kong tanong, bakit hindi mo naiisip na bakit napaka analog ng iyong konsepto ng pagpapasa-pasa ng kaalaman? Kumbaga sa hmm. pamagitan ng pasa-pasa ng crafts, no? Very very analog. This is a very analog novel, no? Kumbaga hmm. kung isipin ng iba ang 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 matatag na pamamaraan ng pagpapasa pagpa pagpapasa-pasa ng kaalaman ay digital. That's why we're digitizing mm-hmm. everything today. No? We're trying to digitize everything so to preserve knowledge. No? Whereas this book actually goes against that idea that it's not the digital that will save us, but the analog. No? The analog knowledge, analog practices of the monastery will, will save us. No? It's not the digital preservation of knowledge. No? So that's one thing that... Um, It's it's actually rather pre-internet. <laughs> Sorry, eksa makahinlasyon tayo anet no. It's actually pre-internet in that 
that it seems to you know rely on the very pre-analog uh, concept of not passing not passing down knowledge through generations. It basically being through either the cluster, or the monastery, or the tombs. You know, <laughs> ay magpapasa yung kaalaman nito. Dito gives na dito na alala ko kung may kaunti pang time ang mga French. You know how they how the French um, uh, try to store try you know, to store uh, French literature yung um, uh, Bibliothèque Nationale you know, sa France. Ang ginagawa nila, they don't store uh, French literature in digital format. They store it on titanium discs wherein the letters are burned microscopically onto the discs. No? So you can actually using a, uh, what do you call this? A, um, a um, electron microscope, you can read the titanium discs and see the letters there. You know? And then you can read the, for example, Descartes, or Leib or, or Leibniz, so you can read them, or 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 or, or mga other French uh, works. You can read them on the on the titanium discs uh, using a um, using a um, electron microscope. No? So uh, ito ay parang ano eh, um, parang hindi digital knowledge is not stored as zero one zero one zero one, but it's stored as actual letters burned on mm -hmm. titanium discs and stored under buried under mountains. So it's a kind of analog uh, knowledge that they want to uh, preserve. You know? So uh, uh, yun yung nakita ko rin na usapin dito. No? Now it doesn't seem to be, um, it seems to be, it seems to rely on analog uh, knowledge, on, on human practice and training and learning to pass on uh, knowledge from generation to generation. Tapos yung dulo ng yung novela ay parang talaga explosion of languages na at iba't ibang mga um, salita, ano? Uh, papunta na sila sa desierto, ano? Doon sa dulo na ito. Uh, kung saan nila ilalagak yung mga nuclear waste, ano? Sa desierto, sa ilalim ng uh, desierto. So, uh, yun lang yung ilang mga katanungan ko at uh, uh, sana ay mabigyang uh, tubo nito ni Annette Naasahan natin may mga tanungan no, mula sa ating mga tagapakinig din ngayong, ngayong hapon. Oo. Oh. Ay, um, maraming salamat, uh, Bowman, sa, uh, sa pagbabasa mo at uh, para sa lahat ng mga comments dito. At um, baka sa, doon sa analog digital, hindi tanong, hindi sa ngayon ako kasi... Napaka mahusay din sa mga digital na technologies ang mga kasapi ng order ito. Diba? May, mayroon isa na galing sa Russia, isang uh, Russian nuclear scientist na nagtatrabaho uh, sa Geneva sa mga NGOs. At siya uh, binuo ni, niya ang tinatawa ko simulatorium na parang talagang digital simulation uh, of the sort of kind of a 3D virtual reality simulations of the dangers that could happen to the monastery. So that that is a very, very important part of their work of memory. And, and I mean, they're in the utopias, dystopias, there come ideas come in of how to, I mean, and these are all ideas that I've taken from the scientific uh, uh, literature, which is quite uh, enchanting or a bit uh, frightening on this issue. But anyway, there is this idea, for example, to to write this information into the DNA of, of, of animals, of cockroaches, uh, most possibly because they so will survive everybody. And But some high, high, high civilization could then retrace the information that is written into the DNA or, or things like that. So that's uh, even going beyond virtual, uh, basically. But I think tama ka dyan, na sa, sa, sa tingin ko, napaka-importante ang, ang analog kasi hindi ang makina mismo ang gagawin ito. Uh, the, the machines will do, not do it for us. So there will always, I strongly believe that there will always have to be people who run the machines. Or uh, and people who actually can invent new machines, and people who, who can turn off a machine if it's going out of order, 
And um, so therefore you need very intelligent people who actually hone uh, their own crafts and their, their knowledge uh, aside from the machines. And there it's uh, yung tanong tungkol sa mga guild naman o uh, monasterio. Um, actually, I, the whole, everything you mentioned about the cosmopolitanism of the guilds, I think is also present in the early history of monastic order. Like here, maybe I have to say that uh, Switzerland was Christianized twice, uh, first by the, the Roman uh, Empire, the soldiers, but it, that was restricted mainly to the, to the Roman uh, colonies. When the Roman Empire broke down, uh, the, not just Christianity disappeared, but also the alphabet was practically lost for, uh, like literacy was back to zero for uh, a, a number of centuries. And the ones who reintroduced the, uh, the writing together with Christianity were Irish monks, wandering monks. At Parang, uh, they were not nationalist at all. They were really all around, and they, uh, their, they had, they had a sort of a, not a cosmopolitan, but a European vision of the landscape. And um, uh, so, I think there is a, a universal concept in the monastic tradition. At um, important naman kasi baka dapat kong sabihin na hindi madasalin ako, hindi madasalin na tao ako, pero um, napaka-interested ako sa, sa monasteryo bilang institusyon. At um, parang noong sinabi, sinabi ko tungkol sa hangarin ko, um, uh, ang hangarin ng isang magandang buhay, ng isang masaganang buhay. At meron ito sa, sa, sa konsepto ng monasteryo para sa akin. Parang isinasalarawan ko ang isang parang makatang taon at uh, mula, makulay na pang-araw-araw na kalakaran. Pareho ng taon ng simbahan o talagang monasteryo. Pero ipagkakas pinuo itong taon mula sa mga paborito kong tula at awit. Yun ang last chapter. At uh, mula sa mga kwento ng aksidente ng mga karerang nuklear na dapat talaga maalala at matandaan. Baka uh, pumasok, pumapasok din talaga isang religious idea na uh, talagang ang kab pihasnan at tungkulin ng pag-alaala sa bawat tao at sa bawat kamatayan. At ito wala sa guild. Itong parang uh, philosophical man o spiritual core ng uh, at actually, I mean just as I talk <laughs> um, when I came to the Philippines in 91, is the last people I wanted to mingle with were missionaries. So, because I was very critical of the missionary tradition of Europe. So, like I came from the solidarity movement. So, of course, we were uh, critical there. But then I realized that I met people uh, who were missionaries. At, uh, and especially because when I, in 2014, also tried had to improve my Tagalog and I was kulang talaga sa tingin ko ang mga mahusay na eskwelahan para sa pag-aaral ng uh, Filipino at dapat kong talaga pini pilihin isang eskwelahan para sa mga missionary. At uh, kasi doon ang uh, pwede mong uh, mag-aaral ng mas malalim na Tagalog. At, and some of them are... <laughs> I, I, they're somehow a bit of a mystery to me that some of even the people, where do they take their commitment from that is totally independent of fashions, of philosophical fades, of things. But that's maybe a, a remark on the side. What I really, uh, what really interested me in terms of monasteries is that, or orders, is that I realized that there are similarities in the socio-economic history of orders 
uh, if you read, if you see the Chinese history of the Shaolin uh, monasteries and the Benedictine uh, and Franciscan Dominican orders in Europe like this, you try to set yourself apart from the world and from the powers of the world and, and have your own world in a way while still being in this world. But then it's usually the first generation, totally idealistic, they, they set this up and in the second or third generation, they will be corrupt or uh, they, <laughs> and they, they get entangled with the economic structures, etc. So, and pareho ito uh, sa Europe man uh, o, sa, o sa China. Yun ang, that interested me, this, to look at the monastery not as so much as a religious institution, but as a kind of institution that tries to build a power separate from the state and from the, the economic powers that be. Hindi ko alam kung kung sagot ito sa sa tanong mo. At um, isang maliit na tanong na nakita ko nakikita ko sa sa chat na talagang bother ko Ka kasi bakit hindi ong ang pangalan ni Betty kasi talagang taga Fujian ang ang kanyang uh, ang kanyang tatay at alam ko na na sa Fujian Hua o Hokien man ang wang ay ong pero um kasi ang aking Tai Chi teacher sa Shanghai noong 2009 uh, two months ako sa Shanghai, pangalan niya Wang. At ang pinakakaraniwang pangalan sa mainland China ang Wang. So kaya pinili ko dyan. At, um, and then I really thought, do I have to change it very uh, on the last stretch? But actually, this Betty Wang, she has this very complicated relationship to her father. And it's when he dies uh, that she, she is overwhelmed by guilt because she has uh, not made up, uh, she hasn't come to peace with him. And she develops this almost craze for anything Chinese after uh, he has died. But she actually knows very little of China. She hasn't been there, she hasn't. Um, and what she really loved about China were the early films of sort of Kung Wushu, uh, Kung Fu movies from Hong Kong, the Chucky Chan or Jet Li in the early 90s. At Tangahang ako rin trend. So parang it was, uh, she actually lives in a sort of imaginary China that she also searches when she goes to Hong Kong and she of course doesn't find it. But this, uh, but by actually learning Mandarin, and which she hated as a child. She hated the Mandarin school for the Ch Chinoy children in, uh, in Manila. But when she relearns Mandarin, she, she sort of um, invents her own version of a Shaolin Taoism, etc. that is later on passed into this idea of the monastery also. So there I thought it, it's okay if it's Wang and not Ong. <laughs> to give a, a long answer to a short question. Uh, hindi ako na marini. Basahin ko na itong messages na nakuha natin. Oh. Uh, so, uh, sabi ni Butch Dalisay ay mabuhay at salamat, Annette. Ano? Uh, sabi ni nung isang fellow natin, si Eric Tingol, salamat uh, po, Annette. Ano? Si Luna, Luna uh, Secret Pleto, salamat din, ano, sabi niya. Uh, si Marian Moll, sabi niya, I'm so intrigued ano, by this. Ano. At uh, may mga gustong magtanong. Ano. Uh, pero bago nun ay uh, mayroong ipang, iba pang comments ano, tukos galing sa FB. Ano. Um, eh, sabi, um, saan ba makakuha ng kopya? Ano. Tapos... Um, um, Siyempre yung comments ko sa Ong at sa Kawang, nandito rin. No? Mm. At um, sabi ni Ron D. Pinol, very interesting topic. Uh, good evening po. At uh, si uh, Miss P. Pai Warren, no? isa sa ating mga fellows, uh, she has a comment. 
or a question. Siguro pwede niyang i- pwedeng uh, live niyang tanungin ang kanyang Oo. question. Hi. Uh, Pipay, pwede mong tanungin ng... Hi. So, may, tan- may, uh, may tanong lang ako sa proseso ninyo. Just a very quick question. Because I noticed that it you're dealing with a lot of uh, rich topics in your novel. So, on the one hand, you have the science related with regard to the nuclear waste. Then, um, I'm sure the the language that you brought up about the monastic is also um, something that you would draw rich material from. And then you also have, um, of course, the emotional narrative of the novel. And I was thinking that if you're drawing from so many wells to speak uh, with regard to putting your story together, do you have a certain strategy for maybe trying to connect the scientific with what we might understand to be on the maybe not hard religious, but something to do with the monastic. So you have all of these, hmm. uh, you have all of these separate elements together. Is there a way that you try to connect them? Do you let them stand on their own? Is there a certain extent that you make sure that they're all connected? Mm-hmm. And if you do have a system for it, or you feel like um, you you succeeded in doing it, I'm, I'm sure you have, but the novel's not in English and we wish it was. Um, ho- hope we can read it when an English version comes to us. But do you have a favorite instance in your novel of how you were able to maybe bring all of these disciplines together? That's my question. Um, uh, maybe it's not a system, but it's uh, one thing I learned because this is my fourth novel. And I, I must say, I have two novels that failed, that never <laughs> saw the light of day because I actually failed on actually the things because I often uh, have too complicated ideas uh, and or and but this time I thought it I thought it's somehow I managed to do it otherwise I would not have published. So, but anyway, it's um, it's more a practice. I realized that I have to really stomach or I, ha- I have to digest the material. I cannot, it cannot be too quick from research to writing. Like sometimes it takes one or two years between the research. I take tons of notes, excerpts. Uh, I draw a lot and I, I have to really um, hear, like I had to review my nuclear physics, uh, physics physics from from high school I had to I did for some months every morning I did one hour of math in the morning uh, to be able to read the scientific material and then I realized I have this tension I want to write a god because I'm actually enthusiastic about the thing but I know it's too early if I write now it will be explanatory didactic etc so here what I did, I, I, I did like in between layers. For example, I wrote a diary of Petra because I wrote, I did a lot of work when I was in the country and I had a lot of observations about nature. And I realized how my perception of nature changed, even of a simple rain or anything, how that changed by this lot reading on nuclear issues. So these experiences of being in the nature with a changed perception, I, I wrote down as a diary of Petra. That's the Ate Petra, the <laughs> yeah, or in the novel. So this diary is later quoted by the narrator of the novel. So in this way, I could bridge this desire to write with the knowledge that it is actually too early to really go into the, the whole narrative. And uh, so I actually, like the, the Hong Kong chapter of Betty Wong, I had to write about three times because after I came home from Hong Kong, I, I wrote this chapter or these two chapters. And half a year later, I thought it was total crap. It was much too close to the experience. So, and 
a happy moment, maybe, for example, when I was in uh, Shanghai these two, two months, I was invited by the Shanghai Writers Association to a program. And every morning I was going to the park to do Tai Chi. And I was sort of befriended by this Mr. Wang, who wanted to improve his English. So we had a, a tit for tat, like uh, first he taught me his Tai Chi and then I, pr I practice English and I brought him some poems. We talked about these poems. He was a fan of Bob Dylan and yeah. Anyway, so um, um, with him, I learned that there is one figure in Tai Chi that they actually do in the morning routine in the order later. That is a Bai He Liang. So, and Bai He is the, in English, in the, is Chinese for a certain crane. And in, in German, I found out that the, that the name of this uh, crane is uh, nuns, a nun crane. So like the, the woman, madre. <laughs> so I, I realized that there I had the, the Chinese Tai Chi and my nun, my sort of monastery language coming uh, into like this fortuitous crossings of, of languages. And I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit manic about my projects. And one thing about mania, which can be very scary, is that suddenly you see connections everywhere. So when I was really into this project, I, I saw orders, monasteries, nuclear waste everywhere, and it was all connected. And I thought like, why has never has nobody else written this novel? Because it's out there. And that's the moment that I, I really love about work. And, and, and I think that it's when, when this feeling is really dense, that's when I think I can start writing. Okay, I, I think that was a wonderful answer to my question. Thank you very much. May isa pang tanong, may oras pa, no? Anet, ito ay, nuclear waste is a global concern. But how do we localize concerns about nuclear waste in the Philippines, where nuclear power is not an option? Ano? Uh, pero gusto mm -hmm. kong magkitang na uh, sa Taiwan, ano, meron doong mga, ang tawag, yung mga, yung mga indigenous people sa Taiwan, they're Austronesians, uh, just mm -hmm. like us. And there's an island, a very famous island, the Orchid Island, na yung mga taga ron ay mga nanggaling sa iba, mga ibatan, ano? galing sa Batanes. Ano? And okay. Orchid Island is actually a storage area for nuclear waste. Of Taiwan. Kaya yun nga, weird dun eh. Kawawa sila dahil sila yung mga katutubong mga ano, Austronesians, para sila mga Pilipino. Ano? Uh, mga mga Ifugao, ano? Ang, ang parang mga taga -iba ibatan ano? Pero yung kanilang lugar, yung kanilang isla ay ginagamit na timbakan ng nuclear waste ano? Sa, ng mga Taiwanese. Ano? Pero yung tanong nga rito ay, uh, oh, siguro masabing universal ang nuclear waste bilang isang problema. Pero sa Pilipinas ay wala pa naman tayong mga nuclear plants no. Naka-moss oh. yung ating uh, bataan na oh. uh, reactor no? So paano ito magkakaroon ng uh, kabuluhan sa Pilipinas? Um, uh, the fact that there is that uh, wala naman ang nuclear power plant hindi ibig sabihin na walang nuclear waste kasi uh, galing din itong basura uh, sa mga ospital. Kasi uh, yung mga, um, the, how do you call these machines that where you test for cancer or the, the whole radiography, etc. That is actually producing quite a lot of, of nuclear waste that has to be stored. And um, actually, I, I, did, I did start to research a bit what is, happens to this waste in the Philippines. I didn't get very far. Ah, totoo yan. Maganda yan. Eh, kasi alam niyo yung uh, tawag dito, yung uh, arboretum sa UP Diliman. Um, uh -oh. Arboretum tatayuan ng, ng PGH, ano, ng Philippine General Hospital. Uh -oh. Yung specialization niyan ay nuclear medicine. No? Uh -oh. Dahil nga na yung uh, parang uh, nuclear research institute ng Pilipinas. So uh, uh -oh. obviously there will be nuclear waste in that, uh, in that uh -oh. uh, facility. Oh. So, oh, totoo yan. Na hindi lang ito... Uh, uh, problema na problema ito talaga din ng Pilipinas uh, sa ngayon no? so uh, mm -hmm. yun nga yung arboretum yun yung last um, 
natural fo- rainforest in, the, in, in, in Quezon City. Yun ay uh, babawasan pa, tatayuan ng mga ospital ano, sa ngayon. So ito ay isang, hmm. uh, isang ano rin campaign issue sa Pilipinas. Hmm. Kaya so wala na yata mga tanong. Oh, ano? uh-uh. ah, so there's another question from from Mil Garcia. Ano? <laughs> And, uh, what is this? What is this question? Um, the worldly and sa ito kay Mil Garcia ano anet mm-hmm. the worldly and the spiritual a monastery that looks after the welfare of the world by securing it against nuclear contamination mm-hmm. not entirely strange given that all the and the instruments do have a worldly interest do wish mm-hmm. to keep the world safe sometimes against itself ah uh, so it's not really a question it's a comment you know and mm-hmm. uh, it sort of backs up your idea about Mm-hmm. Uh, monasteries and um, res- protecting the world against uh, nuclear uh, waste, right? So, paubos natin yung oras. May oras pa tayo natitira? O wala na? So, if you don't have a lot of time, we can give uh, Annette uh, the last word you know, about her uh-huh. novel. When will the uh, a translation come out? Nagtatrabaho uh, uh, na... Oh, um, Nag-umpisa na magtrabaho ang uh, uh, sa si Camille Lucia, ang aking uh, yung tagasalin uh, para sa French. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, the, the, my French uh, publisher and the Korean actually have bought the rights for the translation. So there oh. will be a and the Korean uh, uh, edition. And uh, you know the system with us is like The, the the whole the, the rights are with the publisher so i can maybe try to organize something but it's basically ang dapat kumikilos ay ang 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 publisher na gustong uh, pumili ng mga rights ng nobela nito at hindi ko alam kung may may english syempre inaasahan ko pero Oh, maganda talaga ang kadanasan ko sa Korea sa sa nakaraang ikatlong nobela ko. Ah. Yeah, dai baka min ng Koreano, no? Sa tunayan oh. ng dalawang nobela, yung Wilhelm Tell in Manila, pai to. Oo. Oh. Pati sa akin talaga sa Pilipino o sa English man lang, ano? Uh, para oh. mabasa sa mga Pilipino dai. Maraming connection sa Pilipinas ang dalawang nobelang ito ang mm. ano, uh, makita ito ng mga Pilipino. Oh. Kaya lang mas ito talaga uh, anet Napakahirap ng iyong uh, pagsulat. Napakahirap talaga isalit. <laughs> <laughs> o totoo ba? O, pero gusto, gustong gusto kong mag, uh, magsalamat at pinasalamat, pinasalamat <laughs> po sa inyong lahat. Sobrang hmm. saya ako na pwede ako uh, sumama dito. At uh, I will follow the live streams until Saturday. So... Um, At least I will see you. So <laughs> that's good for me. Yes. So uh, on behalf of ICW at ita, ano, uh, maraming salamat sa iyo. Pero magpapresent pa sa iyo ng isang uh, certificate. Ano. So uh, ito, I turn over the program uh, to our uh, to our friends ano, to, tur- to, uh, for, to turn over a certificate, to give you your certificate for this okay. uh, very important uh, lecture. Uh, for our uh, UP National Workshop 60th uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Maraming salamat sa iyo. <laughs> salamat po. Okay, so I'll read it. Oh, oh. Certificate of Appreciation. Uh, this, certificate, this Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Annette on Facebook. <laughs> for presenting our lecture on Tiefen Laga, a German novel on friendship, nuclear waste, and future languages. During the 60th National Writers' Workshop given this August 17, 2021. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, maraming salamat Annette. po. <laughs> Thank you. Salamat po ulit, Ms. Annette sa pagpapasimula ng ating uh, extension lectures. Bukas naman po ng hapon ay may serye muli ng mga panayam na mapapanood ang lahat. 
Tampok po dito na tagapagsalita si na Rolando Talentino, Eric Pingol, at ang national artist natin na si Virgilio Almario. Ito po ay ipapalabas sa likha ang FB page ng alas 3 ng hapon. Ito po ang schedule ng ating lectures bukas. Babanggitin ko lang po. 3pm, ito po ang lecture ni Rolando Tolentino on writing resistance in the pandemic. By 4pm po ay ipapalabas ang lecture ni Eric Pingol, Beyond Comics. Pagkukwento mula comics patungo sa iba pang anyo. At sa 5pm naman po bukas ay ang lecture naman po ni national artist Virgilio Almario tungkol sa ang diwang masayahin sa tula. Ipapakita po namin ang schedule. Makikita nyo po ang inyong schedule sa screens ngayon. At ang mga social media pages po. Pakilike and pakifollow. Maraming salamat po sa lahat. Magandang gabi. Magpahinga po ang lahat at kita-kits po.